Bonjour à tous et à toutes. Le Réseau du sport étudiant de Québec ainsi que le Cégep Champlain-Saint-Lambert vous souhaite la bienvenue au championnat provincial du soccer collégial division 1, présenté par Gopier. Ce demi-finale masculin opposant les lauréates de Cégep Saint-Hyacinthe au cavalier du Collège Champlain-Saint-Lambert. Bienvenue aux partisans des lauréates et bienvenue aux partisans des cavaliers. Allez, mon partant. Les starting 11 pour les lauréates. Numéro 1, gardien du but, goalkeeper, Samuel Bollier. Numéro 4, number 4, Alex Trahad. Numéro 5, Victor Barron. Numéro 9, Julien Limon Lord. Numéro 10, Jacob Archambault. Numéro 12, Jeremy Vallée. Numéro 13, Nathan Quinn. Numéro 15, Julien Mangio. Numéro 16, Thomas Grandmont. Numéro 18, Jérôme Boutin. Et numéro 24, number 24, Xavier O'Dwyer. L'entraîneur chef, head coach, Marc-Antoine Côté. Les assistants, head assistant coaches, Antoine Jobin, Laurent Terret, Steve François. Et les 11 partants pour les Cavaliers de Champlain, Champlain Cavaliers, starting 11. Numéro 4, Jaden saint Paul. Numéro 6, Julien Raymond. Numéro 7, Luca Preziosi. Numéro 9, Samir Mohamed Jeha. Numéro 11, Nicolas Mincillo. Numéro 14, Peter John Gesson. Numéro 18, Tagui Haru. Numéro 21, Frédéric de Rampentani. Numéro 22, Juan Pablo Gomez. Numéro 24, Guillaume Brunet. Gardez du but goalkeeper. Numéro 1, number 1, Antoine Massoud. L'entraîneur chef et coach, Mauro Di Choco. Les assistants entraîneurs, Dean Howie, Tofik Lamoudi, Frédéric Nadeau et Nicolas Saint-Pierre.
Et en partant, on fait du bruit, make some noise pour les lauriates de Cégep Saint-Hyacinthe et les cavaliers du Collège Chablain. playing at their home field here at Seaway Park 3 in St. Lambert. Ball bouncing around now. Champlain looking to get it out of their own and Champlain wearing white jerseys, blue shorts. Saint Saint wearing all black. The gold numbering, the gold letters. Cavs now take the ball. Here's a chance now offensively for Champlain. Comes in Muhammad. Oh, a shot. He fanned on the shot as he was trying to kick it. Got his foot stuck in the turf and the ball rolled off his foot and out of place. So that was Samir Muhammad Deha. So again, this is the second of two semifinal RCQ matchups in Division I men's collegiate soccer. Hansik, 2-1 victory over St. Foy. They'll play the winner of this game for gold tomorrow here at Seaway Park. 5.30 that game will start. The loser of this game between Champlain and Say Hi Saint will play St. Foy for bronze. That game scheduled to start at noon. So we're just over 90 seconds into this contest. Champlain finishing in second place. Laureate finishing in third. Champlain had 18 points. St. Hyacinth had 14, obviously four points separating these two teams in the standings. The Cavs, because they finished second in the RSAQ division, they got the first round by. So that ball goes out of place. So it's gonna be the Laureate on the throw in. So it looks like now, yeah, they're gonna have to redo that throw in here. The wind has definitely picked up as the sun is setting here at Seaway Park 3. Temperatures are dropping. First, the rumor, rumor part of me for tomorrow's game temperature wise, it's supposed to be about only 2 degrees. So, we Sam, we seen part of me, Ben Sta, who was on the commentary with me for the last game, he'll be calling it tomorrow with Mo Khan. Again, the bronze and the gold medal game, so. I want to say good luck to both of them with the near frigid temperatures tomorrow. 
So that ball goes down into Laureate's end of the field. Knocked out of play. So it's going to be Sharon playing ball here on the throw-in. Champlain coming into this matchup for in a regular season, at least 4-1-1 one one at home. Only loss at home was against the Hunsink back on September 24th by a score of 3-2. The Cavs, though, 0-1-2 away from Seaway Park 3. The record, the away record a little bit better for St. Hyacinth. 2-2-1 two, two on the road. I said again, the Cavs getting the first round by. That's how they punched their ticket here to the semifinals. St. Hyacinth, they beat Montmorency on Tuesday night down in St. Hyacinth by a score of two to one. Shot on goal, and it's in! Bit of a dribbler there, that shot. Ended up beating the goalie, found the back of the net. So the visiting Laureates have a one nothing lead here. Less than four minutes into the contest. Not the way that Champlain wanted to start this contest. Down one nothing. Less than five minutes in. But de Laureate, marked by number 12. Scored by number 12, Jeremy Valley. Quatrième minute in the fourth minute of play, Jeremy Valley. Son première de la provinciale. So as you can hear at home, Jeremy <laughs> Valley getting the goal. Four minutes in, giving Saint Hyacinth a one. Nothing lead early in this contest. So you, you can't imagine a better start for St. ISA. Here's a chance. Looking for a second one here. Quick to offense. That shot goes to the right of the goal post. Right of the, uh, the upright, I should say. So in soccer and American football, that kick is, would be no good on both sides. Shot off the foot of Victor Barron. Chance now. And Hayasan now looking for some more offense. That shot goes off the defender, number 18, and Taigi Haru. So it'll stay Laureate's ball here. Laureate's going to have the corner kick now. So one of the key points coming into this game was. St. Hyacinth's offense, again, only, they scored, so they only have five goal scorers on, on their entire team. But they get an early one here, it's a corner kick, a weak dribbler, easily handled by the defense of the Cavaliers. Looking to clear now, they can't. The Hyacinth looking for more now, headed by the Cavs, but all the way well past the top of the box. <laughs> Ball bouncing around between a couple of players now, St. Hyacinth takes it over. Now the Cavs get it right back. Here's a chance now for Champlain leading the rush. Samir Mohamed Deha takes a bump but still keeps the ball. It's going wide for a second. He's dropped off. Minchilo now put to the other side of the pitch. See number four, St. Fard there. He thought about shooting for a second. Ball now put over to the right. Defender on the sideline. An attacker, I should say, that pass down the middle is knocked away. Possession still kept here by the Cavs. Champlain looking to quiet down the Laureate spectators sitting to my right of the broadcast area. Ball plays is played back up top. Haru with it, he drops it back. Raymond had it there for a second. It's put over to his right. Strong kick over the middle, deflected, but knocked away by saint Hyacin. Loose ball now. All the Cavs take it for a second. They're giving right back to their opponents. And that ball is chipped up. By saint Hyacin. Knocked down the midfield, headed now. A kick down low. One of the Cavs has it, able to kick it out. And that ball's going to go out of play off the foot. I believe that was Julien Raymond. So throw in here for the Laureates. Their head coach 
Coach Marc Antoine Cote. Head coach for the Champlain Cavaliers, Mauro Dusioko. So the goalkeeper for Champlain has the ball. He puts it over to his left now. Champlain looking to get some offensive presence. They had a couple of flurries here in the last few moments. Not able to get a high quality shot on goal though. And that ball is turned over. Just kept in at the line as he tiptoed. And that was number 10 in Jacob Archibald. He loses the ball though. Great job coming back on defense by Champlain. And that kick a little too strong goes out of place. So we're going to have then Hayasane with the throw in here. See number 12 with the throw in. Jeremy Vallée, again, the game's only goal scorer so far. Just inside of the 10 minute mark of this first half of action here at Seaway Park 3. The Cavs and St. Isa looking to both punch their tickets to the finals, to the gold medal game tomorrow at 5.30. Here's a chance now of the turnover. He has a chance now, can he get past the defender? He can't, great defensive positioning. And the ball's kicked in our direction. Good job, there's the fans right there keeping their heads on a swivel. Knocking that ball down. Fresh ball is brought in now. The throw in. Cavs have it. And Raymond's pass gets turned over. It's not towards the goalkeeper. And that's handled by number one, Antoine Moussaud. And one nothing lead here for the Laureates. Masada lets it put the ball to his left. It's Haru now with it. He passes the ball to his right over the middle and deflected once again and out of play. So it looks like St. Hyacinth thought the ball was going to be there for a second. Not sure why there was any confusion. It was clearly knocked out of balance by one of the Laureates players. But now the Laureates are able to cause a turnover at midfield. Here they come now, looking for the second goal of the game, and they elect to put it back now to their defense. And now smartly played back to the goalie. We gotta be careful there, just able to get the ball up at the last second. One of the defense, and now it's turned over. Here's a chance now. Gomez with the pass, oh, and it had a chance there for a second. One of the attackers, one of the forwards for the Cavs, I believe that was number 14 there, Peter John Boga Gisan. The ball is knocked up now by saint Saint. Because a chance now to turn over. Right in front of the Cavs bench now. So the Cavs are going to have the throw in here. It's going to be Jed and St. Fard. St. Fard at six feet one. Second tallest, actually tied for the tallest of all the players on this Champlain squad. And Malik Abdu Diakite. The two players who are 6'1 in this lineup. And as I spoke a little too soon, is also 6'2. Simon Annabelle. Annabelle, pardon me. He's a chance for the Cavs now. Knocked away by the Laureates. Loose ball. Oh, and a collision right there. A dangerous collision. I believe that's number 12. Yeah, and Jeremy Valley. So he's up first, actually. Cast players slowly finally getting up with a limp. I believe that might be number 11. I'm not sure. He's getting a talking to by the official right now. And that is, yeah, it is number 11 indeed. So that's going to be Nicola Manchilo for the Cavs. So luckily both players, after taking a few seconds to get up, they're going to be okay to continue. Actually, well now... I spoke a little too soon once again. Valet's on the sideline now. He's getting, uh, getting some, some bandage. Some bandage, I should say. So it looks like he's bleeding. So obviously the trainer's going to go there, stop the bleeding, put a bandage on, and let him get back in, in the action here. Twelve and a half minutes almost gone so far in this first half. Long kick taken by Masood. Masood thought about going to his left for a second. He thought better of it. Now he decides on a second, third attempt. Now he does go to the left indeed. Haru's pass on the ball's turnover. The chance once again for Santaya Saint. Shot on goal, handled by Masood. 
So we've seen so far on this one, the Cavs look a little shaky in their own end. Even on the other side of the pitch, they've had a couple opportunities, but just getting the ball out of their own end of the field has been tough. This aggressive attacking St. Hyacin squad. Over 13 minutes now gone in this first half. Get a one nothing lead for the visiting team in, in the Laureates. Jeremy Valley getting the goal at the four minute mark of this contest. Champlain looking to answer here. And the Cavs work the ball up on the sideline. St. Far now, he has it, gets past one guy. Can he get past another? Just quick pass here. Nice passing by Champlain. And St. Far just tackled, taken down basically. Tripped up, I should say. At about the, I want to say 35, maybe 40 yard line. There's going to be a free kick here for Champlain. So it looks like it's going to be Minchillo now with the kick. So he's talking to one of his teammates, deciding what to do. Again, the winner of this game will go on to play a Hunsik tomorrow. 5.30 p.m. will be the gold medal game. The loser of this game will play St. Fall in the bronze medal game. That'll be at noon. Here at Seapoint Park 3, shot on goal, headed away, rebound, shot, oh, just missing the net by a couple of feet was number 22, Juan Pablo Gomez. The idea was great, but this execution was a, just a little bit off right there on that shot. Yeah, we've got the Champlain faithful here in attendance at Seapoint Park 3 up on their feet and cheering. But again, just a little bit off target. 50 minutes gone now. In the first half. In the last game, again, between the Hunts and St. Fall, we had about five minutes of extra time added at the end of the game. So we played about 95 minutes in that one due to injury. So we'll have to see if we have any extra time here at the end of this one. Ball quickly knocked up by the Cavs. Here's a chance now. Gomez puts the ball to his right now. Actually, St. Hyacinth now is able to take over. Oh, good hustle there by Gomez. He's able to get it back. Ball split to the right hand side. Oh, we got a stoppage of play here. So I believe, yep, the ball's going to stay right here with the Cavs. So it's going to be Cavaliers' ball on the throw in on the side. That's St. Far with the throw in. He gets the ball back off the deflection. And the ball rolls out of play again. It's still going to be Champlain ball. Actually, no, part of me is going to be Sentai Sandball now. Right, here's a chance down low for Sentai Sandball. So one on two. Great hustle, though, getting back on defense by number 21 and Frederic de Repontigny. Cavs trying to get the ball out of trouble, out of harm's way. Ball goes up the right sideline, kept in by the Cavs. And the ball in midfield. So quick passing here by Champlain, looking to generate some offense. Can they do it? Let's find out. Ball is put down low by Brunet. Over to Dylan Pierre Alexi, and he loses the ball. The ball turned over again. Now the Cavs have it. Play back up top. Pass over to St. Far. St. Far now gives the ball down low. Oh, blowing a tire. That looked like it was number 11, Minchillo. And he's hurt. It's more than blowing a tire. It might be a, an ankle or a calf injury. And that ball is kicked out of play by its entire sand. So quickly the officials calling over one of the trainers from the Champlain Cavaliers. Minchillo, he just, he had the ball for a second. He was running one way and he just kind of, I don't want to say collapsed to the ground, but he stopped and just kind of, kind of, kind of folded a bit, sat down exactly where he was. And then he hasn't really moved since then. You can tell he's in a considerable amount of pain though. You don't want to speculate obviously what the injury could be. And definitely a non-contact injury right there. So these teams met once in the regular season. The Cavs dominated St. Hyacin, winning by a score of 3-1 to one to open the regular season here at Seaway Park 3 back on August 27th. Samir Mohamed Deha getting two goals. A yellow card as well, but two goals is what stands out the most. Masanisa Abdurouf getting a goal as well for Champlain in that game. Again, four yellow cards in all. So again, they talked about the one by 
Diha again Federate the Rapani got one, Tagi Haru and Olivier Jingra. So four yellow cards, but the, the number that matters most is the three goals that they put up in a zero that they surrendered on defense. Again, that was the kick that game was to kick off the regular season between these two teams. Because both teams are a lot better since then. Again, Champlain finishing in second. St. Tyasan finishing in third, separated by four points in the standings. 18 for the Cavs, 14 for the Laureates. Champlain dominant at home, 4 1 and 1. Again, only loss, as I mentioned earlier, back to Ahunsik. A by score of 3 to 2 back on October 24th. Here come the Cavs now, looking for the equalizer. The Cavs player gets tripped up, and if a lot of fans here at Seaway Park think there should have been a yellow card, but play continues, and the ball's turned over now. Another ball goes out of play. It's knocked off of one of the St. Tyus Sam players. Oh, wow, I should have saying it's going to be St. Tyus Sam ball. So that's throwing a little off target, so the Cavs actually end up getting the ball back regardless. See number nine there coming down again, Samir Mohammed. They hustle. Yep, it's going to be Cavs ball right here. Just inside of 20 minutes gone so far in the first half of this contest. So we see Minchillo back in the game, so he's stretching on his calf. So, as I said, it was a lower body injury for sure. Luckily, though, it's not too bad as he's entered back, he's come back into the contest. So Minchillo's actually going to take this kick right here. No, he lets not to. Kick on goal. Headed away and out of play by the Lurie. Yes, that shot off the foot of number 24, Guillaume Brunet of Champlain. So Champlain's going to have the ball here. It's going to be a corner kick. And we're now past the 20-minute mark here in this first half. And the winner of this game goes for gold. The loser goes for bronze tomorrow afternoon here at Seaway Park 3. Throw in now by the Cavs. Chance a shot on goal. Hits the, the back. Number 12 there. there was Jeremy Valet. Saying how you saying. Loose ball now. And Hayes is able to get there first, but the Cavs, good hustle there by Minchillo. Able to shake one player, not another. He loses the ball now. Ball's kick low, headed up. Ball in midfield now. Ball bouncing between both teams. One team has possession for a couple of seconds, then back to another, then back to the former team, then back to the lateral over again. The ball's been active, as has all the players here on the field. We see a big spill right there, Brunei. Ends up falling backwards after the slide by one of the St. Sam players, but that was after the whistle. So Minchillo now with it. He plays it over to his left to Brunei, back to Minchillo. Trying to get a quick pass there to Deja, but it's knocked out of play. Yep. It's going to be St. Sam ball. So the throw in now is number 10, Jacob Archambault. Oh, he left not the throw in, so it's going to be Valet now with the throw in. Finally, he tosses it in there. Cavs now with the ball. Knock it all the way up to midfield now. Lauriasa yes, elected retreat now with the ball. Looking to set something up here to get the ball out of their own end and get the offense going. now with it. Long kick. Not the way up into the air and knocked out, or almost knocked out. St. Tyus Sam. Ball loose down midfield. Cavs now with possession. Minchillo, he's been active in this one so far. Valet knocks the ball up. Uh, Valet gets the ball, I should say. Pardon me. You know, here's your chance now. St. Tyus Sam looking to generate some offense here. 
And getting pushed out of bounds was number 10, Archambault. Referee letting to put away his whistle, just let the teams play. I saw that last game as well. Couple of yellow cards. And the, oh, here's the turnover. Now's your chance. Shot on goal. No, I'm not getting the shot off. And the player tripped off. So I believe it's going to be a shot here. Penalty shot here. And that was number five who got tripped up by the goalie. Number five for St. I saying Victor Barron. So the goalie now getting a yellow card. And the aggression displayed so far by the Lower Yats has paid off. They have a glorious opportunity here to go up by two. Less than 25 minutes into this contest. So here we go. We have the first penalty kick, at least in the regulation. On the men's side in this playoff. At least in the semifinals. So here's a chance. Shot on goal! It's good in the back of the net. Getting the goal. Number 13, Nathan Quinn. Putting that ball in. So Nathan Quinn gives his team a, a 2 nothing lead less than 25 minutes into this contest. And for Quinn, Sixth in the regular season, his first of the postseason could have come in a bigger time for the Laureates. So again, sloppy defensive play, but the Champlain Cavaliers have put them in an even bigger hole now, down two nothing. And again, we're not even at the 25 minute mark; we're seconds away from hitting that point. But again, down 2 nothing is not where the Cavs wanted to be again. Looking to punch your ticket to the gold medal game here tomorrow yeah, yeah. as they host nine, Nationals. Scored by number 13, Nathan Quinn. Then second minute in the 25th minute of play. I'll the penalty. Valet the looking shot. for a second of the game. Oh, the ball just rolled off his foot. He gets tripped up, loses a shoe in the process. You see his left shoe on the field. Thought there should have been a, a penalty call there. Thought there should have been a, a yellow card perhaps. None delivered by the officials. So right now Champlain looking to to respond, show any signs of life here. Again, down two nothing. Not even at the halfway point of the contest. This is not the start they imagined. Again, a chance to not only defend home turf, but if they're able to, they would again punch a ticket to the gold medal game tomorrow against the Hunsick. Again, Hunsick's the only team to beat Champlain here at home. By a score of 3-2 earlier in the season, so you have to match with Champlain. Obviously, they were wa both teams were watching the final game, uh, the last game, I should say. Obviously, Champlain looking at chops, looking for a rematch against the Hunting in the finals. But again, now they're down two goals. You have a lot of work to do if they want to have any chance of getting there. St. Isa, on the other hand, again, this is a team. They're coming in as a lower seed, the three seed, and Champlain, uh, as I mentioned, is a two. St. Isa this season, again. 14 points in the regular season. They had to beat Montmorency in the RSAQ quarterfinals this past Tuesday night at home by a score of 2-1 to one just to, to get to this matchup against the Champlain Cavaliers. And that shot on goal. Headed on. Nice save by Masood. He was sharp on that one. Almost a 3-0 lead there for St. Hyacinth. Loriat's looking for more of that ball. It's knocked out of play. It's going to stay Loriat's ball. It was knocked out of play by number 14 for the Cavs and Gesson. The sun is pretty much all but gone here at Seaway Park 3. Will the sun set on the gold medal chances of Champlain? Stay tuned and find out here. Still a lot of soccer left though. But again, not the start that Champlain wanted. That ball gets knocked to the play. Lurie adds ball. Valet with the throw in. Accurate throw. A nice header. Chance down for Lurie adds. Oh, good hustle though. Breaking up that play with St. Far, getting in between 
both St. Hyacinth players. Loriasso still with possession. Ball gets knocked off high. I believe offside is going to be called against. Yeah, it is exactly the call going against the Loriats. Just over 28 minutes gone in this contest. Entire say once again making a living right now on the offensive end of the pitch. Strong kick there by Masood, but it ends up onto the feet of one of the Laureates. Ball up in the air now. Brought down by St. Fard. He's being hounded by Quinn. So it's going to be Cavs' ball here. Ball dangerously played back to the goalie there for a second. Almost led to another offensive opportunity for St. Saint. Ball knocked forward by the Laureate. The race for it now. Ball down low. Great hustle. Great job there. Some fancy footwork on the back line, but it's even better work by the Cavs. And now they turn the ball over. It's a pass at the top of the box. Shot on goal. Saved by Masood. Another big save by Masood. See the Laureate fans giving their team a well deserved round of applause after that rush right there. Almost. We're able to take a 3-0 lead. And the cast player, he gets tripped up. And you can hear at home the wind is picking up here immensely at Seaway Park 3. The Cavs looking to get a little wind at their backs now. Going to have to start getting some shots on goal. Cavs ball now. Ball down low. None of the balls in the box. Can the Cavs get a shot off here? They can't. The ball gets knocked to the play. Who's it going to? It's going to stay Cavalier's ball. You know, my apologies. Actually, they awarded it. The official pointed towards the Cavs direction, but no, it's actually it's going to go to the Laureates. On ball, almost turned over there. Dangerous pass by the Laureates. The catcher able to get possession of that. That would have been their best op offensive opportunity of the game so far. Cross pitch pass. Ball's knocked down. Cap just able to keep it in. That was number seven, and Luca Berziosi. And the ball goes out of place. So it's going to be Cavs on the throw in. So the Cavs, right now they look rushed. Looks like they're trying to speed things up here. I, don't know. I imagine that's in an effort to kind of find an offensive spark, but they got to maintain their focus here and worry about execution. Over the 30-minute mark now in this contest. Shot playing, working the ball around. It's a good job here by the Lowry Ass. They're just pressuring the man with the ball, not giving much time or space to their opponents. Playing a smothering defense. Now, again, they're up by two goals. So you think they would take some chances, but no, they're, they're really settling down defensively. They want to keep that goose egg on the scoreboard. Come the Cavs now, trying to generate something here, find some sort of creativity, some sort of opening. A shot to the top of the box, not the way by Glorias, but it goes over to the Cavs now. Champlain still with it. So Minchilla now, he puts the ball over to his left to Brune. Brune gets a quick pass over. Deja who puts it over to his right. Ball kicked towards the middle again, now kicked back towards midfield by Glorias. Now kick to the wide side. That's St. Fard. St. Fard going one-on-one -on -one against the defender. The ball gets knocked to the play, but Champlain will maintain possession here on a throw-in. So 
Russell St. Fart with the throw in now. Crossfield pass. Now the ball directly in front of us now. There's Brunet, he puts the ball back. So again, this seems to be the plan of the Lauriats is keep the ball on the outside, keep it around the perimeter. They're not letting Champlain gain entry down the middle of the field. Brunet now with it, he's being hounded by one of the defenders. I that's Valet, actually. The ball goes out of play. So once again, it'll be Champlain ball here at the corner kick. So Minchillo now setting up for the corner. So we're gonna have a set play here for, for the Cavs, just inside of 35 minutes gone so far in this matchup. Comes Minchillo with a strong kick up in the air, headed to the goal, and it's in! Champlain gets on the board. Just shy of 34 mark of the contest. Signs of life by the Cavs. Can they tie this game up? Let's find out. My apologies, I couldn't see who scored the goal. So massive bodies in front of the net. So as soon as I hear it over the PA, from the PA announcer, I'll give it to you. Now the Cavs now with the ball. The pendulum of momentum has swung in their direction now. Can they capitalize on it? Trying to build some positivity now after getting the first goal of the game. Vu de Cavalier, Cavaliers goal. Mugget Bounty Mouth District scored by number 18, Taggy Haru. So it's going to be Taggy Constant Haru. In the 35th minute of play. So one point touch, 2 1's your score. Taggy Haru getting the goal for Champlain to put them on the board now. So again, after being dominated the first, I want to say, 27, 28 minutes of the matchup, the Cats finally able to to generate some offense here. So Haru, that's his first goal of the postseason, second of the year overall. On the ball, oh, knocked out of play by the Cavs. I see the disappointment on the face of number seven there, Luca Preziosi. He thought he was gonna be able to create some offense. Here comes the Lurias now looking to create some offense of their own. Be able to get the ball up and out. Now the ball's at midfield now. And a good job right there. But I believe that's number 22 and Gomez avoiding collision with the player. But now possession's going to go to the Laureates. 36 minutes and counting gone already in this contest. Long kick down the right-hand side intended for Valley. Good job, though, getting back on defense, kicking the ball well to play actually behind our broadcast area. Down to the grassy field that was done by number 24, Guillaume Brunet. And the ball was tossed in, so we have to throw in right here. Strong one there by Valley. Middle, ball middle of the field, shot. Fanning on it there was Quinn. He had a chance for his second goal of the contest. Come the Cavs, they get the ball. Almost to midfield and now past it. Three players back on D. For Loria, strong kick in front of the benches and that's kept in play actually. Nice kick there. That was by number 21 for Champlain and De Rapani. So that ball goes out of play. So I'm gonna have a throw in here just Trying to see if who it's for. So there's a player actually. He's injured on the sideline. One of the Cavaliers. Can't see who that is, though, unfortunately. My vantage point. Can't see the number. He's double over in pain. Yeah, so it's going to be Cavs ball here on the throw-in. The Cavs not making a substitution. They'll be one man short for the next couple of minutes. The ball is headed out of play. It's going to stay Champlain ball. So 
Don't get any word from my cameraman. It's number four just hurt. Jed and St. Fard. Again, he's been active in this contest so far. Hopefully, he's not going to be out of the lineup for too long. Here's a chance on down low for the Cavs. Players tackle from behind. That's going to be number nine. That's Samir Mohammed. Yeah, he's down, rolling around on the turf in pain. So we're going to have to see now, are they going to have a, a penalty kick here? Or what's going to be the result of this play? Haven't seen a card being delivered yet. The player for the Cavs still down, finally getting up now. So it looks like he's going to be okay to continue in this one. So yeah, it's going to be a free kick here for the Cavs. So again, the Cavs finally getting on the board just a few minutes ago. Looking to tie this game up now. And of course, looking to punch the ticket to the finals against the Huntsick. This, of course, would be a dream scenario for Champlain. Again, they're hosting Nationals here. So there's always extra motivation for any team who's the host. Especially when you're as good as the Champlain Cavaliers. Second in RSA here comes Minchilla now. With the kick on goal. Oh, he's just going up high. Just misconnecting by about a foot or two. A superb chance there for the Cav. Just a little bit too much mustard on that shot. It was a rocket. Just went a little too high for the Cavs. Inside of 40 minutes here. Played so far in this first half. Laureates with the ball. They turn it over Minchillo. Quick pass, but to uh, someone wearing a black jersey. Cavs have possession now. <clears throat> ball taken over by the Cavs at midfield now. Oh, nice pass there. Good job reading what the offense was going to do. The Laureates now have the ball, and the Cavs end of the pitch. Ball bouncing around, set it down by Minchillo. He puts pat the ball over to his right. Now not back down deep, but not too deep by Lurias and cleared by the Cavs. Here's a chance now on the right-hand side for Champlain. And the player is tripped up. I believe, yeah, that's number 14 who ends up hitting the turf in Gassan. And the ball is almost turned over. A header out of play. That's off the head of number nine in Deha. You'll see a Lorias player who's down on the turf. As Valet, the game's first scorer. He looks like he's okay. He rolls up. Looks like he was trying to get a card there on that one. Or if he was a little smarter than that. 41 minutes gone so far in this first half of action. Second RSEQ semifinal men's soccer matchup. And that ball dribbles towards the goal slowly. Masood comes out of his net to the top of the box to handle it. Cavs now Minchilla with the ball on his foot once again. I've called his name a lot so far here this evening, but for good reason. He's been active. The ball headed towards the sideline. Kept in, no. By Brunei, his shot up high, headed to the left by one of the Laureates. They're looking to clear the ball, knocked up, but taken over by the Cavs. Big kick there for off the foot of number six in Raymond. Ball now up top, work down to the side. The chance now for Brunei, his pass over the middle, that gets knocked away. Strong kick, way off target though, unfortunately for Raymond. Over 42 minutes gone now in this first half of action. The Brent Blocking with you live at Seaway Park 3, home of the RSEQ Collegiate Nationals this year. Again, earlier we saw the Huntsick Eagles knock off the St. Floyd Dynamics by a score of 2-1. to one. The Setting game, a lot of back and forth action, a lot of physical play as well. The officials, the referees looking to let the players play for the most part. Only a couple of yellow cards handed out. Here's a chance down low now. That's knocked up by the Cavs defender over to his goalie in Masood. Puts the ball over to his right. Cavs looking for a breakout here. 
And the ball dribbles out of bounds. It's going to be Laureate's ball here on a throw in. About two minutes remaining here in this first half. Ball's played down low. Smart play there by the defender for the Laureates. Headed the ball over to his goalie out of harm's way. Number 24, Xavier O'Dwyer. What a nice move here. Here's a chance now for Laureates looking to add on to the lead, but they turn the ball over. Comes the Cavs now. Strong kick, and it's going to just be kept in play. Good hustle there. Showing some speed there by Samir Mohamed Deha. Santaya San again up by one. Ball around midfield, knocked into the Cavs' end of the pitch, now brought back up by Champlain. They cross the yellow line. Loose ball knocked up by Valet. But this pass ended up being taken over by one of the Champlain players who gets tripped up. So it's going to be Champlain ball here. Champlain has to move quickly if they want to get one in before halftime. I'll get another one, I should say. Comes Brunei now with the ball on his foot. Number 24 for Champlain. Looking to get past one defender. He kicks it back to his right. Strong kick there by Haru. The goal scorer for the Cavs is deflects out of place. Still going to be Champlain ball here. And the clock says about 20 seconds remaining here in the first half. Haru now with it. He puts it back over to his right. Kick a dribbler to be deflected and knocked up by the Laureates. Just shy midfield. The Cavs with it though. The quatrième officiel indique minimum de trois minutes ajouté au premier demi. Minimum of three minutes. So a minimum of three half. minutes is added an extra time here. Because now we've, we've hit the 45 minute mark. So again, a minimum of three minutes added here. Again, there's been a couple of injuries here in the first half, which is why we're seeing three minutes or more added. Here comes Mitchell and now he puts the ball over to his right. Shot. Passes it towards the middle. Loose ball now. Laureas, they kick it out of play. It's going to be Sean playing ball once again here. So if you're Santaya Saint, they're kind of playing with fire a little bit. They, they've, they've toned down their offense over the last couple of minutes. They've been trying to play more of a defensive game, but it's not working out as well. She has a number of opportunities, and that shot there goes way up in the air. It kind of falls down, directed all the way back up to nearly midfield by the Champlain. Brunei now with looking for a little bit of space, looking to split through defenders. He plays it back to Minchillo. Minchillo now goes to his left, now back to his right. He lets it kick it to that side. Nice move there, some fancy footwork. Just goes right there by Raymond. Ball's played down to Brunei. Yeah, went off of one of the Laureates players, and Brunei with the throw in. Right, here's a chance now. Nice move. Can he get a shot off? He does, but it gets deflected. Goes wide of the net. That's off the foot of Deha. Samir Mohamed Deha has been one of the best players on the pitch so far for either team. So it's going to be Champlain ball here with the corner kick. So he's going to see Minchillo again. So Minchillo set up the first goal with a strong kick. We're going to see what he does here on the second. The corner kick by Minchillo. Extra time is almost run out. It was announced to be at least three minutes. We're almost at that mark now. Shot deflected high in the air. Outside the box. Who's going to get it? The Cavs get to it first. Minchillo shot. A weak bouncer towards the goal and it's handled by the goalie. And he kicks it all the way to the opposite side of the pitch. Oh, we see a lower ass player. He takes a spill. It's going to be sign high ass sand ball. And that was Nathan Quinn, the second goal scorer of the contest. So the 
let's see now what the Cavs, uh, pardon me, rather what the Laureates have in store right here. Kick from nearly midfield, a strong one towards the goal. It's headed in the back of the net. Goal, saint Saint. And a big one right there. Less than a minute remaining here in the first half. And I believe that was number 24. And O'Dwyer to score that goal. Bune Laureate, knock it by number 24, scored by number 24, Xavier O'Dwyer. It was O'Dwyer indeed getting the goal, so reestablishing the two goal lead. And that'll do it for the end of the first half. A 3 1 lead. Besides Saint Hyacinth over the home team in the Champlain Cavaliers here. Yes, the second half action coming up. Can Champlain make a comeback over Saint Hyacinth? Punch your ticket to the finals against the Hunting tomorrow night. We're going to find out in just a few minutes.
freaky. I can learn a lot from you. Gotta come teach me. You a little hot girl. You a little sweetie. Sweet like pale and sweet like peach tree. Like that. I can tell you crazy, but you kinda intrigue me. Yeah, I like that. Seen it on the plane, trying to see that in 3D, mommy. I know I get around cause I like to move freely. But you can lock it down, I can tell by how you trade me. Seen how you did, homeboy, so please take it easy. Good to have me on your side, I ain't saying that you need me. Six got talk, but I ain't trying to get preachy. No, no. I seen how you did, homeboy. Please take it easy on me. Cause I don't wanna play no games, play no games. I don't wanna play no games, play no games. Treat me like I'm Uncle Lou. Have to sleep. 
slot the top off, it's just a roof. Uh. She said, where we going? I set the moon. We ain't even make it to the room. She thought it was the ocean, it's just a pole. Now I got her open, it's just a ghost. Who put this shit together? I'm the glue. So and said. Shorty face, Tommy out the blue. So and said. Prayer, prayer for Keith. So and said, mother. Someone said, Don't play us the week, 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 Back in high school, I used to bust it to the dance. Yeah. Now I hit the FBO with duffels in my hands. I did half a Zan, 13 hours till I land. Had me out like a light, ayy, yeah. like a light, ayy, yeah. like a light. Ayy. Slept through the flight, ayy. not for the night. Ayy. 767, man, this shit got double bedroom, man. I still got scores to settle, man. I crept down the block, down the block. made a right, yeah. Cut the lights, yeah. pay the price, yeah. Think it's sweet. On sight, yeah. Nothing nice, yeah. Vegas in my eyes, yeah. Jesus Christ, yeah. Checks over stripes, yeah. That's what I like, yeah. That's what we like, yeah. Lost my respect, yeah. You're not a threat. When I shoot my shot, that's sweaty like on Shaq. See the shots that I took, Ay. wet like on Book, Ay. wet like on Lizzie. I be spinning valley circle blocks till I'm dizzy. Like, where is he? No one's seen him. I'm trying to clean him, yeah. She's in love with who I am. Back in high school, I used to bust it to the dance. Now I hit the FBO with duffels in my hands. I did half a Zan, 13 hours till I land. Had me out like a light, 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 like a light. Yeah, past the dogs and cell, he's sending texts, ain't sending kites. Yeah, he say keep that on lock. I say you know this, this tight. Yeah, it's absolute. Yeah, I'm back with boot. It's lit. La Ferrari. Jamba Juice, yeah, we back on the road, they jumping off, no parachute, yeah, shorty in the back, she say she working on the glutes, yeah, oh and by the book, yeah, this how it look, yeah, by the check, yeah, just check the foots, yeah, pass this to my daughter, I'ma show her what it took, yeah. baby mama cover Forbes, got these other shook, yeah. I know who you came here to see, if you a freak, then you come on with me. I know what you came here to do. Now bust it open, let me see you get loose. It's going down for real. Welcome back here to Seaway Park 3. We're ready for second half action here. And it's our SEQ semifinal matchup between St. Hyacinth. And Sham playing right now. Santaya San Lorias with a 3 1 lead. Recap the goal scoring quickly in this win. Jeremy and Valet making a 1 0. Santaya San and Nathan Quinn getting a goal. A penalty kick giving the visitors a 2 0 lead. And we saw Taki Haru getting Sham playing on the board. He had all the momentum. And then we saw a late goal, less than a minute left here in the first half. Zave O'Dwyer giving. The Lurie has a 3-1 lead, and that's where we stand after the first half of action here. Opening minute here in the second half. Obviously, Champlain looking to creep a little closer and potentially tie this game up. They have a big hill to climb, though. You have to, this is a boxing match. You'd have to give the first couple of rounds, not just on the score, not just because of the goals to the Lurie but as well just the, the offensive zone pressure, the, the creating turnovers as well. They're able to hit the Cavs with some big, wild round hooks, some uppercuts, but some body blows as well. So looking now, the Cavs looking to, to, to get some hooks in there, get some jabs of their own, get back into this contest. This year in two goal games, and that ball goes out of play. Fans had to be alert down there, it almost hit. A little one, actually. I'm glad she was able to stay clear of that one. And two goal games this year. Champlain is 2-0, so 
they have proven before that they uh, they can win by two goals. Coming back from a two goal deficit, obviously, is it's a different thing. So we're gonna have to see what they do here. Quick throw in here. And that ball gets knocked out of play. I believe it's going to be Champlain ball, though, still. So it's going to be the Cavs now with the throw in, or the corner kick, pardon me. So let's see if that little quick 10 minute break gave the Cavs a chance to catch their breath, reassess what's going on, and come with a little stronger here offensively. Because the first 10 to 15 minutes of this match, it was pretty much all St. Hyacinth. I mean, Chilla now. He's been one of the top players on the field so far tonight for the Cavs. And the ball's turned over now just before midfield. And St. Hyacinth turned the ball right back over. A good play right there by number 18 in Haru. Chance now for the Champlain. So, yep, they're going to call that against Zetaya Sain. So, Champlain's going to keep the ball right here. Let's see what they can do with it. They're going to have the kick here. So, a free kick right here for Champlain. So, now the Cavs looking to set something up here offensively. Looking for a deflection on the header, maybe a bicycle kick, or looking to get a rebound here and bury in the back of the net. Let's see what Champlain elects to do here. Champlain, of course, wearing white and blue. Shot towards the goal. Oh, it's a little too much on it. They were looking for the head of the player was open, driving towards the net, but that ball, again, just a little too strong and going out of play. As I said, Champlain wearing their usual re uh, red, wearing their blue and white. Where St. Hyacinth wearing the all black with the gold numbering and lettering. Here's a chance. Champlain creates a turnover. Ball's loose. Shot on goal. Oh, nice save. Big save by the goalie off a rocket shot. Right there. I believe that was number 14 in Peter John Boga Gesan. I should have been actually Minchillo, actually. Pardon me. Either way, big save though by the goalkeeper for the Laureates. Yeah, it was by Minchillo that shot. My apologies. Now here comes the Cav once again on offense. Looking for a little wizardry right here. Shot on goal. A pass deflected. Champlain, a huge chance there. Not able to get off a shot. They're looking to. Create something, one too many passes though, perhaps. Not able to get a shot on goal, and that's a disappointing end to what looked like a promising rush there by Champlain. So pinching down there with St. Fard. He was injured earlier in the first half. Glad to see he's back in the game. He has the ball on his foot right now on number four for the Cavaliers. Use the word wizardry before. He definitely falls under that category with what he could do with the soccer ball. Champlain on that pass just a little too far for the forward. Ball bouncing around now, set it down by the Lori Astor, able to get it up and out past midfield. Again, Champlain coming in tied with Hunsick because the top two defensive teams. In the RSEQ division, both teams allowed only nine goals in the regular season. Champlain as well uh, as a Hunsick as well, pitching three shutouts this year. So obviously that's off the board right now as Champlain is letting three goals in the first half. But they're going to have to come up with some of that rock solid defense again. They're going to have to keep this at a, th a three goal tops here for, for their opponents. They can't let in another one, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Oh, here's a chance. I made a spoke too soon. Here's a chance. Oh, nice defensive play getting back on D there by number 21 in Deborah Pontney. I'll tell you what, Quinn, Nathan Quinn there, who scored the second goal for 
Like I was saying, he would have he would have been in almost all alone right there. And here's a chance now for the Cavs on the counterattack now. Can he get a shot off? They do. Oh, just over the net through the uprights. That was off the foot of number seven. Preziosi. Again, if this was football, that would have been good for three. That would have been a field goal for sure. Unfortunately, again, just putting too much on that shot. So two high-quality scoring chances, two grade-A scoring chances for the Cavs. Again, just not able to find the back of the net. Like I say, finally getting the ball out of their own end. A strong kick all the way to midfield. <clears throat> Matthias saying now looking to generate some offense for the first time in the second half. They have the ball down low. Ball is played back up to the right-hand side. Centering pass headed away by Champlain. Now Champlain, they have numbers here on the counterattack. Can they capitalize? And the ball is headed up towards the goal and knocked backwards. That's off the foot of number 15 and Julien Mangion. Shot on goal, and it hits a leg and knocked away by the Laureates. Comes Quinn again. He avoids the slide by one of the defenders. He has a chance down, down low. Looking like a one-man gang so far here on this rush. And Cavs are able to get the ball off his foot and knock it away. Chilling now. He had the ball. He coughed it up, though. Here's a chance once again for Laureates now. Looking to pick up the pace here on offense. Now they play back to midfield. And that ball goes out of play. Champlain scored 22 goals in the regular season. Again, hard press here offensively, at least in this game. Trying to get the ball in the back of the net. Comes the Cavs now. Get the ball past midfield. Now it's not back by the Laureates. Quinn now with the ball, trying to get it past two defenders. He does, but possession now taken over by Champlain. Ball now midfield. Not backwards now by Lurias. Now Lurias have a chance down low. Good job there by the goalie getting over there quickly. To break out that offensive chance there for the Laureates. And again, that's Antoine Massoud. Can't really fault him for many of the goals. I mean, I mean the penalty shot, I mean, it's the hardest shot in soccer to, to save. And the other shots were, were big shots as well. Gonna have to rely on the defense for a little bit of help here. Again, they want to keep the three on the scoreboard for the Laureates. The players tripped up. There's no call. I believe that's Quinn. So Quinn, along with the, I want to say about 60 to 70 fans here representing the Laureates, they, they didn't agree. They thought there should have been a should have been a call right there, perhaps a yellow card, but play continues and Cavaliers have possession. Just inside of an hour, 56 minutes and change so far played in this contest. Pitch black sky, obviously we have the lights on here at Seaway Park 3. It's gone from windy now to officially being cold. Chance here for the Cavs. Can I get a shot off? Going to the right now. Passing that direction, but it's broken up by the lower ass. Here comes the Cavs trying to do the same. And good job by the Cavs here. Their forwards are really making it hard on this uh, 
the midfielders and their defense for the Lurie Ass to get the ball out of their own end, and they finally do. Not back in though, once again by Champlain. And the ball is put up on the right sideline. It's knocked to the play. Possession is going to go to the team in white and blue. So Champlain on the throw in here. And that ball gets knocked out of play. So it's going to be number 14 on the throw in once again for Champlain. And Peter John of Bogagissan. Well, now it's actually part of me. It's going to be, instead of 14, it's going to be number four now. It's going to be St. Fard. So far, St. Fard goes a bit to his right now with the throw in. Ends up on the foot of Gomez. Gomez now battling. Able to split two defenders. Nice pass. And we get some centering pass. Oh, intended for number seven. And Preziosi, just he couldn't get his foot on the ball. Fifty-eight minutes gone now in this matchup. Still a three-one lead for Saint-Diacin over the Cavaliers. And as I said, the winner of this game goes on to face the Hunsic Eagles for the men's Division One RCQ Championship tomorrow at five thirty. The loser goes on to play Saint Fall in the bronze medal game at noon. Both games here, of course, at Seaway Park Three. Ball goes out of play. New ones quickly tossed over. There's Cavs ball here. St. Titan saying not the ball out of play. So throw in here by St. Far. Long kick. All the way to the opposite end of the field here. Ends up finding a target though. One of the Cavs with the ball. Trying to make a move. One too many moves. He's actually tripped up. And we see actually the St. Thaya Sand player is hurt. Not sure who that is. A classy move though by number 24 for the Cavs. And Guillaume Brunet going over to make sure that the player is okay. So the trainer being called on to the field for the Laureates. Again, if you're just tuning in, pardon me. A 3-1 lead for... The Laureates over the Cavs. All the goals scored were in the first half of this contest. The Cavs have been the better team. They come up more aggressive here in the second half. Again, looking to climb that mountain, climb this hill that they've dug for themselves. Trying to get back and tie this game up at three apiece. Again, these two teams met here in the regular season. To kick off the regular season, actually, all the way back on October 27th. Champlain with a dominating 3 0 win in that game. Samir Mohamed Deha with two goals. Masanisa at the roof with the other goal for the Cavs in that shutout victory. And for the Cavs, that was the second biggest win of the season. Their biggest, their most lopsided victory was a 7 0 win here against John Abbott earlier in the season. Again, Champlain has been so dominant at home. 4-1-1 one one here at Seaway Park 3. Again, the only loss came at the hands of a Hunsik by a score of 3-2 to two back on September 24th. Cavs now looking to get the ball back and create some offense. Well, they got the ball back now. Can they get some offense? Because Minchillo looking for an opening. Play it back up to near midfield. The ball is played down low by the Cavs. So what St. Thaïs is doing, I, mean, I don't think they mind turning over the ball as much, but what they're doing a good job of is getting into shooting lanes. They're not really letting the ball handlers, especially the forwards for this Cavaliers offense, get a clean look at the goal. A strong kick here. All the way past midfield now. Off the deflection, but knocked right back in by the Cavs once again. 
So the Cavs dominating time of possession. So far, it's a shot towards the goal. It's handled by the goalie. He falls down. Getting a li little dramatic there. Getting a well-deserved round of applause, I guess, from uh, the Laureate faithful here. Smart now is killing some time off the clock. Right now, clock, the clock is the only thing standing in the way of the Laureate getting the W. And again, trying to, as they try to punch your ticket to the finals. The gold medal game tomorrow. But here's a chance for Laureate looking for goal number four. Can they get it now? Shot, and that's broken up quickly by Derapani of the Cavs. He kicks the ball out of play. So it's going to be St. Tia's sand ball, pardon me. Over an hour gone in this contest. We're almost approaching the 60, 63 minutes in this matchup. It's going to be some extra. There was extra time added in the first half. It's going to be extra time you can guarantee added in the second half as well. Ball midfield now. Laureate looking to regroup here defensively. They get the ball looking to generate some offense now. The Cavs with the ball. Right in front of the St. Tyasa bench now here to throw in. Now the ball back in midfield. Champlain now they get the ball to the near side, directly to the right of our broadcast area. Up here in the sky, Jack, and a windy evening here in St. Lambert. Ball knocked up into the air, headed forward by one of the Cavs, but knocked back out by St. Ayasin. Again, the Cavs getting the first round by to the semifinal matchup, of course, because they finished second in RSEQ, a game of 18 points behind, a couple points behind first place, undefeated Ahuntsic Eagles, again, who punched their ticket to the finals earlier today. St. Tyasan beat Montmorin C by a score of 2-1 to Tuesday night down at St. Tyasan in the RSEQ quarterfinals to punch their ticket to today's game. Cavs now looking to settle down this ball and get it closer to the goal. You're not going to expect the, a bended leg Beckham kick to end up in the back of the net. Nice pass there. On off to the play, though, by St. Tyus. So, again, the Cavs maintain possession here. Ten seconds away from the 65th minute mark of the contest. So obviously a player, he's down, he's hurt. One of the, the lower, he asked me, check that actually, again, a nice show of sportsmanship right there, but one of the Cavaliers going over to make sure the opponent's okay. Imagine they might have collided there. Both these teams, pardon me, <clears throat> both these teams over the second half of the season coming in red hot. The Cavs went 2-0-2 in their final four games with wins over John Abbott, again, by a score of 7-0. As I mentioned, they also beat Gar Garneau by a score of two to nothing. Their two ties, they had a 1-1 tie with the Vanny Cheetahs and a 1-1 tie with a team we saw earlier today, St. Foy, in the regular season finale. So 2-0-2 record in the final four games for the Cavs. For Saitaya Sant, they went 2-1-1 in the second half. A 3-0 victory over both John Abbott and Garneau. Their tie was 1-1 against Boyd de Belong, but they lost 2-0 to the Vanny Cheetahs. So only one loss between both teams over the second half of the season. But here's a chance for St. Tyasan looking for another goal. And that kick goes over the net through the uprights. But no good for soccer. A glorious opportunity right there, I believe. Yeah, that was by number eight. And Gabriel Milan. Here's a chance now. The catch showing some speed. Oh, the ball just rolls off the foot. Unfortunately, Gassan goes out of play. Pour les Cavaliers, sort du match. Out of the game, numéro 24, number 24, Guillaume Brunet. Et dans le match, maintenant, now in the game, numéro 15, number 15, Massinissa, Sadek. 
But Guillaume Brunet has been one of the best players on the pitch this evening for the Cavs. He checks out of the game. Masinisa at the roof. Sadek checking into the game now, number 15 for the Cavs. So that ball goes out of play well behind. Actually onto the track, really. So it's going to be Cavs ball. So under three minutes away from the 70th minute mark of this contest. Still a lot of soccer left. Still a lot of time, but the Cavs are going to have to, again, generate some better opportunities and get the ball down low against this rock-solid St. Tia Sand defense. Because we talked about it earlier, when it, talks to, when it comes to being hard to score against, again, Champlain and Ahunsik, oh, the ball goes out of play in our direction, actually. Oh, good catch by one of the fans. Went off the, the recycling bin, off of the bottom steps of the stands and into his hands. Good catch right there. Let's talk about it again. Champlain and Ahunsik both only letting in nine goals in the regular season. Top two defensive teams without a shadow of a doubt, but again, three goals. Let in all in the first half by the Cavs. A rare defensive letdown by usually a really solid team on defense. So that ball rolls out of play. I believe the Cavs, yep, they're going to maintain possession here. So it's going to be Champlain with a throw in. Ball on the far side of the field. Now at midfield. Now put over in front of us. And here comes Sadek, freshly on, off the bench onto the field. Now number 15 has a lot of length on his side. Loses the ball for a second. Is able to get it back over to a teammate. Puts, puts it back to Sadek on the sideline now. And the ball is knocked out of play. And it's going to stay Champlain ball. Good call there by the official. Looked like Sadek had touched the ball last, but he didn't. It was actually one of the players for saint Sain who just got a foot on it. So knocked it out of play. So once again, good eye by the official. So we have a kick now coming by Julien Raymond. Kick towards the net. Champlain looking for the header. They get it, but not hard enough. Coming over was the goalie to make an easy save. He looks to put the ball over to his left. And that clearing attempt goes off the off a foot. And Sadek had it for a second. St. Tyson turns the ball over. Here comes Minchilla now. So we see the ball get knocked down low by the Cavs. Goes out of play. So it's going to be St. Tyson ball. So it looks like a yeah, substitution here. Men on the match number 10, number 10, Philip Alexandre Alari. So Julien Raymond goes out. Number six coming in for him, number 10, Philip Alexandre Lari. And it looks like see a couple of Lariat players warming up. Looks like they're going to be making some substitutions soon themselves. St. Fard and Quinn battling on the sideline. Minchilla now with the ball. He plays it up. Good job getting back there. First to touch the ball was number 15 is Julien Mangion. So that ball gets knocked out of play. Quickly, new ones toss over to St. Fard for the throw and for Champlain. Now St. Fard cutting off the ball carrier there. So we see the Champlain player, he gets pushed to the ground. That was number 10 in Alare, again fresh off the bench. And Laurie actually able to clear headed quickly by Champlain. Now, ball between both benches. Oh, and the ball being awarded now to the Laureates here. So we're past 70 minutes now in this contest. Past 71 minutes, actually. Almost 71 and a half. So this game coming down to the last couple of minutes here. Not too far away from the 90 minute mark. And again, we're going to have extra time added on. So, so, so a little bit of hope for Champlain to come back in this one. Let's see if they can do it. So, ball gets knocked up. Intercepted now. Taken over by the Cavs on the left sideline. 
Cavs looking to go from defense to offense quickly here and get one in the back of the net to make it a one goal game. Here come the Cavs. That player is tripped up. I can't tell who it is though from far away. So the ball goes to the player and they're saying it went off the Cavs player. So it's going to be Santa Yassin with the ball. with the ball now. Come the Cavs and the offensive end of the pitch. Long pass to the right-hand side over to Sadek. Sadek, quick t shot over to the middle. Looking for one of his teammates to get it. They can't. It rolls all the way near the sideline. Cavs still have the ball, though. Champlain now trying to sneak down the left-hand side. And that ball goes out of play. It rolls off the forward's foot. Almost at the 75-minute mark here. Long pass all the way to midfield by the Laureates. Now they have the ball on the offensive end of the pitch. Now ball between both benches now near the sideline. Somehow the ball managing to still stay in play. And now it looks like it gets put out of bounds. Player might have stepped on the line there with possession. So it's going to be Champlain ball. Again, Champlain 2-0 in two goal games. Twenty-two goals scored in the regular season. Only one here tonight, so obviously Champlain looking for a little bit of that regular season magic offensively here, trying to get back and tie this game. Kick, strong one towards the goal, knocked away though by the Laureates. Cavaliers though still with it. Just mad. Oh no, it looks like that. He went out of bounds there. That was number nine. He did his best to try to keep the ball in. And Deha tried to get that shot on goal. The shot was accurate, but again, he had a foot on, foot on the line. The Cavs now fighting for the ball. They're able to get it. Here's a chance now for Champlain. Good job, though, on defense. Dude, that was by... First chance actually, oh, the ball rolls towards the net. Masood comes out to play it. Do that defensive play there. And the last play was by Alex Trahan at number four. But Loriaz ball, not towards Masood again. Cavs quickly bring the ball up. And that shot goes off of the, the backside of one of the Loriaz players and goes out of play. Number seven, Gabriel Nangua. So Gabriel Lang Langua has come into the game. They're not match now in the game. The bell size, number 16, Thomas. Grand ball. So pardon me, Langua actually comes out of the game. My apologies. And for him, number 16, Thomas Grandmont. So one midfielder coming off, a defender coming in for the Laureates. 76 minutes gone so far in this contest. It's getting close to do or die time here for the Cavs. Here's a chance out down low. Can he get a shot off? They do, but it gets deflected in the other player. That shot off the foot of Deha. Him and Minchillo have been the best two forwards here tonight for Champlain. Corner kick now by the Cavs. Can they create something? Can they build some offense off of this play? 
Here comes the corner up high. Looking for the header. They get it. And it goes out of play. Unfortunate ending to what was a promising corner kick there for Champlain. Getting this little snake bit, and that corner came off the foot. A strong one there by Philippe Alexander Larry. St. Far with the ball now in his foot. He puts it up. Sadek with it. Quick passing here by Champlain. And that ball gets knocked out of play. Gonna be Cavs ball. Grandma fresh into the game. He knocked the ball to play. Now Lorias have it. Good defensive play there by number 21, though, for the Cavs. De And actually he gets some 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 props there from his opponent there in Quinn. Quinn realizing that Raponti was the only man standing between him and a, and a fast break all by himself. So the Raponti for the Cavs breaking up that offensive opportunity for the Laureates. Larry kicked towards the goal, headed well wide of the net. So that a play. So again, the Cavs still with possession here. Cavs will have a corner kick. So it's going to be a Larry again. He had a strong corner kick just a few moments ago. Let's see what he can do on the second attempt here. Larry looking to set up. The offensive piece is moving around. Another strong and accurate kick towards the goal. Headed away, though, by the Laureates. Looking to get a kick off of Sadek. He had the ball knocked away. So they're saying it's going to be St. Tyus Sands ball. So one of the players, I'm not sure if he was just a little winded or maybe got got hurt there for a second. He was down, but now he's back up. Strong, strong kick all the way down to the opposite end of the pitch. It's going to stay in play. It will kept in play by the Cavs. Ball near midfield now. Now pass midfield. Now put over to the Cavs side of the pitch and the ball. Ooh, and that's a Cavs player. Looked like he made it. Caught his foot in the grass. Number 14, Peter John Guzan. Call the match now in the game. Nimel Vine, number 20. Malik Diakite. So Peter John Bog, I guess on coming out now. Coming in for him is my leg Abdu. Diakite. And Diakite, pardon me. He's coming into the contest now. So some fresh bodies on the pitch for the Champlain Cavaliers. Just a few seconds away from the 80-minute mark of this contest. So you have 10 minutes of regulation time, and then it'll be an extra couple of minutes. You can be rest assured for extra time, for injury time, I should say. Here comes Sadek now trying to set something up offensively. He drops the ball off, and now put up back top, put up top, pardon me, to Minchilla. Now Minchilla for strong... Strong leg here, and he lets it rip, but that gets blocked. Laureates again, able to knock the ball out of harm's way. Right now, the only thing that is the enemy is the clock right now for Laureates. They're trying to kill as much time as possible. They're not worried about adding another goal. Shot ball up in the air now. Oh, and Quinn gets knocked out from behind, but play continues. Matthias Sand there, not happy with that no call there. Here's a chance for the Cavs now. Got to take advantage of the of the anger. Is Matthias Sand? So yeah, a yellow card is being given now, and that's actually going against. The Laureates, I believe, yeah, that was given to number 13 and Nathan Quinn. So a corner kick here by the Cavs. Another opportunity to make this a one-goal game. So Quinn's got to got to keep his nerve here. He's got to watch. He doesn't want to get a second. Yellow card and be ejected from this game. He'd miss the gold medal game tomorrow. Header over the net. 
And again, this Cavaliers offense has just been snake bitten here all game long. They've had a ton of opportunities, especially over the last 10 minutes of the second half. Just their headers are either going over the net or wide of the net. Their passes aren't as aren't as crisp, or even when they are, they're getting some some good shots off. But the defense is back for the Lorias, blocking, and getting in the way of all of them. Sadek leading the rush once again here for Champlain. Ball in the middle. Not back up top to Minchilla. He smartly puts it over to his left. A little bit more space here for the Cavaliers offense to set something up. Ball down low. Another header in the opposite direction of the net. Though shot on goal by Sadek. Oh, hit the post. Hit the crossbar, rather. The goalie might have actually gotten a piece of that. Might have went off the goalie's hand. Then the crossbar and onto the top of the net. So you see the substitution now made by the Laureates coming out. It's Charles Elliott Pajot, number 11. Coming in for him is number two now, Benjamin Morin. So two players. Both play for FC Saint Hyacinth. One coming up for the other. <laughs> At the 83 minute mark right now. So that's, yeah, it's going to be a number nine there for the cast of the penalty. And we see Quinn getting in there, pushing a bunch of players. See some other players jo joining the, the fracas now. And again, these guys, a lot of trash talking too. That's number eight there for, and Gabriel Milan for, saying these guys got to watch out again you can't get kicked out of this game you can't get a red card you don't want that because again you'll miss the gold medal game tomorrow again takes place 5 30 here the winner of this contest taking on the the Hunsik eagles bronze medal game of course the loser of this game taking on saint foy dynamics at noon but again tempers must be held in check here you don't want to be missing the, the bronze or the gold medal game here tomorrow both teams still have a chance to medal you don't want to mess that up by taking a silly, silly penalty and getting kicked out of the game. The referee is being lenient here. Again, here as I said earlier, Champlain Cavaliers leading all teams with red, uh, what, yellow cards, probably with 23 out of the final four here in the playoffs. Ball knocked up in the air now, midfield. And here's a yellow card coming out. It's against Sadek now. He knocked down number nine for Saint Saint and Julien Limon Lord. So as soon as they talked about the Cavaliers, not or anybody not really wanted to take any more red uh, yellow cards, I should say. Sadek take, takes one for the Cavs. And uh, Laureate fans here, they're tasting the victory in a couple of minutes here. They've gone in, they, they've uh, jumped into the cheering fest festivities right here. They started, I should say. So I'm cheering a little bit of trash talking too. We see the cast player push one of the St. Tyus Sam players. And so we see a little bit of rust stuff now. Frustration by the Cavs and a yellow card is given now. Now, I'm not sure if that's going to be against the St. Tyasan player or against the Champlain Cavalier. If it's against the St. Tyasan player, it's going to be against number two, Benjamin Morin. Benjamin Morin, 86 minute of play. Yellow card, St. Tyasan. So there you go. You can hear it from the PA announcer at home. It's going to go against Morin. Benjamin Morin, 86 minute of play. Yellow card, St. Tyasan. So there you go. You can hear it going to go against Morin. So he's going to have to be careful not to pick up a second. 86 minute mark has now passed. In this contest, four more minutes rem remaining in regulation, and then uh, obviously injury time will be added on to the clock here. As you saw though in the last game between St. Fawn and Hunsik, there's not going to be as much injury time added in, in this game. That game had, they said it was a minimum of three minutes added. It felt like it was more like five to six, but let's see how much time is added in this contest. A little bit of miscommunication right there between two players for the Cavs. Saw one player thought he was going to go a little deeper. 
So we saw number 10 there with the pass. And Alari, the other forward, wanted to stay where he was. So again, that miscommunication leads to the ball going out of play. So now we have St. Ayasan with the throw in. That ball deflected out of bounds. So that actually worked out. It's going to be the Cavs ball now. So the catch up the throw in at the 87 mark. 87 minute mark, pardon me. St. Ayasan, St. Ayasan, match number eight. Number eight. Gabriel Milan, rentre dans le match. Numéro 18, coming back in the game, number 18, Jérôme Boutin. So we see another substitution, Gabriel Milan coming out for saint Saint. Jérôme Boutin, number 18, coming in for him. So we see two midfielders being exchanged from one another. Again, the Cavs only one goal in the game. Ki Haru, look at the goal scoring ball towards the net, and a good job by the goalie jumping up and making the save. We have Deha with seven goals in the regular season, Preziosi with four, Sadek with three. They're going to need someone, pardon me, to pick up the goal scoring for this team. Time is ru running out on the Cavs, and they're pitched for gold here as they host the Nationals. Less than two minutes remaining here until the 90 minute mark. Ball not high up into the air. And the foul is done. The cast player missing the header. Since the SAM player was looking to body somebody as well, he missed his target. So that kick towards the goal, that's headed away. Ball towards the goal. Cavs looking for a lucky bouncer, but it bounced a little too much and went wider than that. I said, Taya Sant, one and one in two goal games, so they're about a minute and change away from going to two and one during the season with that goal mark. And their biggest win of the season was a 3-0 win over John Abbott. Their biggest loss, a 3-0 loss right here at, at Seaway Park 3 to the Cavaliers. Final minute of play here. Oh, so we're going to see that, that foul is going to be called on Setaya Saint. See the players and their fans definitely don't agree with that call here. It's going to be a free kick for Champlain. So it's going to be Philippe Alexandre Alari, number 10. He's had a couple of corner kicks. He's showing a strong and accurate leg. Let's see if he can get this one on goal a little bit closer to the net. See Minchillo there waiting at, at the top for the ball as well. Alari's big boot. Oh, nice save. Diving to the left as a goalkeeper to make a save. The ball's deflected out of play. Cavs going to have to move quick. They have a quick throw in here. The fourth official indicates five minutes minimum added to the second half. So five minutes. So we've reached a nine-minute mark. So nine minutes at least added now for extra time here. The ball is knocked out of play by the lower yes. Champlain is going to continue to have to hustle here. Again, they're down by two. So a throw in. No one home for the Cavs. And it gets headed out of play by the lower yes. New ball tossed in. Another throw in here. By Champlain, Sadex, cross field pass, bouncing up high at the top of the box. Now outside of it, Minchilla cutting out the ball to pass. So the Cavs are going to get possession here. So Minchilla now with the kick. Another strong legged player here for the Cavs. Looking to cook up something here offensively. Great kick from Minchillo. Knocked up top by Champlain and knocked out of play again by the Laureates. Quick throw in there by Minchillo. Oh, nice pass. I'm not able to get off a shot. The ball rolled off the foot of the the forward for Champlain on the ball all the way back at midfield. And if you're the Cavaliers, it's not what you want here. You got to maintain this offensive pressure. You have to get the ball down low. 
It's a big kick by Lari looking for the pass. He was trying to connect with number 21, Deborah Pawnee. That pass is a little too far for him to handle. It's going to be Laureate's ball. Ball put forward in midfield and out of play. So the Cavaliers will hustle over quickly. Ball bouncing up near midfield again. Headed by Minchillo, knocked up in the air by one of the Laureates. So Minchillo settles down the ball. Right between the benches. Oh, but he lost it. Ball in front of the Champlain bench now. And Laureates player, he's taken down. So it's going to be, see, Daya Sands ball. So you see quick substitution here. Looks like number 12. And Jeremy Valle, the game's opening goal scorer, he's, he was just basically calling for a sub. He just made his way to the bench. Access to the field is strictly prohibited. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. So again, we're in, we're in extra time right now. It's going to be a free kick here from in front of the Cavs bench. That's on net, but no one home for the Laureates. So the same time as Sandy, pretty much two players knocked the ball to bounce at the same time. Ball knocked high into the air, headed to the left. I'm good for the Minchilla now. Minchilla looking to dial something up here offensively. He gets the ball up. Now knocked all the way to midfield. Still at midfield with the ball. Now put between both benches. Calling for the ball. St. Fard, he gets it now. Number four for Champlain with a little bit of speed and some length here. And he tried to get the ball over to a teammate in number 20 and Diakiti. That's a little off target. Here's a chance for the Laureates now. One on one. Shot on goal. It's in. Nathan Quinn, his second of the game, seemingly puts the nail on the coffin. And Setaya Sant is seconds away from punching their ticket into the gold medal game tomorrow afternoon. Back to Ashton quickly here. The Cavaliers just looking to <inaudible> make the final be a little bit on the scoreboard. And that will do it. The saint Saint Laureate walk in to CMA Park 3 and upset the number two seed, Champlain Cavaliers. And they push your ticket to the gold medal game tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. against the Hunting Eagles. So congratulations to saint Saint. Fortunately, a bitter pill to swallow here for Champlain. Again, the host of Nationals. They were looking to win the National Championship, win that gold medal here at home as the host. But unfortunately for them, their dreams have been shattered. They're going to have to settle for bronze now as they take on St. Foy. Again, that game will come tomorrow at noon. So again, a 4-1 final here. Upset victory by Santaya San. They were led offensively. Nathan Quinn, two goals in the game. Actually, his first goal ended up being the game winner in this contest. So Santaya San's leading goal scorer in the regular season. Again, Nathan Quinn, six goals, adding two now here this evening to lead his team to victory. And again, a chance for goal tomorrow against the Ahuntsic Eagles. So again, this W here for St. Hyacinth avenges a 3-0 loss 
to kick off the regular season back on October 26th. Again, they lost here at Seaway Park 3 to the Cavs by a score of 3 to nothing. So a three-goal loss there, but a three-goal win tonight here in the RSAQ, game number two of the semifinals. So we've had an exciting day of soccer here. We had women's action earlier today, and we finished off with two men's games again. A Hunsick beating St. Fall by a score of 2-1 to one and punched her ticket to the championships. And then we just saw St. Tyus Saint do the same thing as they knocked off the Cavs in upset fashion again by a score of 4-1 to one to punch her tickets to the finals. I'm Brent Bakken. Thanks for joining me on the broadcast here tonight. It's had a great time here. The temperatures managed to hold up. It's a little cool now, but I mean, that's expected with the sun now gone for the rest of the day. It is now nighttime here at Seaway Park 3. Thanks for tuning in to the semifinals matchups. And again, tomorrow we have the bronze medal game. St. Foy, the Dynamics taking on the Champlain Cavaliers here at noon. And then 5.30 p.m. it will be for gold. The Hunting Eagles taking on the St. Tyus Saint. Laureates, tune into that one. Vasim Benstai, Mo Khan will have both of those calls for you. I'm Brent Bach, and once again, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Enjoy your evening, and tune in tomorrow. Chers partisans, maintenant c'est le temps pour la récompense aux joueurs par excellence de la partie. Nous invitons M. Olivier Bissonnette de la RSQ pour remettre les récompenses aux joueurs par excellence de la partie. Les joueurs par excellence de la partie sont des cavaliers du Champlain. Numéro 11, number 11, Nicolas Minchillo. Et des lauréats de Saint-Hyacinthe, numéro 13, number 13, Nathan Quinn. Félicitations, mesdames et messieurs. Faites du bruit, make some noise pour les deux équipes. Merci beaucoup, les cavaliers. Nathan, allez pas loin, Nathan, come back. On a quelques questions pour vous. Maintenant, s'il vous plaît, votre direction, sur le terrain. Bonsoir à tous. Avec moi, le, nu le, le joueur du match numéro 13, Nathan Quinn. Premièrement, félicitations sur la victoire. Vous avez marqué votre troisième but quelques minutes avant la fin de la première demi. Qu'est-ce que votre coach vous a dit à la mi-temps pour conserver cette énergie-là le restant du match? Euh, le coach Marc-Antoine, félicitations à lui pour euh, toutes les tactiques qu'il a mis. Euh, il nous a dit à la... Mets la plus mets la plus euh, Marc nous a dit euh, à la mi-temps, on n'a rien accompli les gars, c'est 0-0. Toute la saison, toute la saison, on a bûché, on a bûché, on a bûché. On est finalement arrivé, on a gagné 4 à 1 sur leur terrain chez eux. Demain, on va aller gagner le match contre Antique, c'est tout. C'est votre première saison en Division 1 et... Euh, vous avez assuré une place dans les finaux des provinciaux, donc évidemment, c'est un exploit. Comment vous sentez-vous par rapport à ce succès dans votre première saison dans une nouvelle division? Euh, certainement, il y a une fierté. On est arrivé là, on, voulait, on avait juste comme objectif de, de faire du trouble un peu dans cette nouvelle ligue, de s'implanter comme nouveau projet D1 dans la, dans la région de ben, la Rive-Sud, en fait. Puis, euh, ben, il n'y a que de la fierté. On est fiers, on est une famille, les lauréats, c'est Hyacinthe. Puis, euh, on est fiers, les gars, c'est bien. Merci beaucoup. Et pour une dernière fois, faites du bruit pour le joueur du match, numéro 13, Nathan Quinn. Merci beaucoup, Aïcha. Et chers partisans, nous remercions le collège Jean-Plain Serrabert, les membres du communauté organisateur, ainsi que les bénévoles pour leur implication et leur précieuse collaboration à la réalisation de ce championnat. Journée 1. N'oubliez pas de nous joindre demain matin qui commence à 9h30 avec le match du médaille de bronze féminin avec les aigles de Hansik. 
aux élans de Garneau pour la médaille de bronze masculin à midi, la médaille d'or féminin à 14h30 et la médaille d'or masculin à 17h30. Tout demain, journée des finales. Bonne soirée à tous et bon retour chez vous. Thank you everyone and we'll see you tomorrow morning as of 9.30 a.m. Have a safe drive home. Merci. Bonne soirée.